vinyl friends, vinyl geeks. Uh, it's Hannah and I am back for a classic vinyl finds video. And I had to laugh while I was watching Dean's video the other day, Dean at Grandma's Handbag. Check out his channel if you don't know it, but he said he has about probably a hundred records to show. And I can definitely relate. Um, I've just been buying CDs and records like mad, probably throughout the whole pandemic here. So um, there's no way I can show everything in a video because A, I don't want to bore you, and B, that means I'd probably have to put out videos on a more regular basis and I just don't have the spark for putting out videos like I used to. The last few weeks have been very difficult on my family. Our worst fears kind of came true and that COVID hit my grandparents' nursing home. Uh, both of my grandparents ended up getting it along with probably 40 plus other residents. Unfortunately, my grandpa passed away from COVID. So uh, we've just kind of been dealing with that. Luckily, my grandma pulled through COVID. She's 93 and she beat COVID. So we're just um, so thankful that she's still with us. But please take this virus seriously. Try to protect your loved ones um, as best you can. And if you haven't done it yet, vote. There's only a few days left. Go to the polling place. Uh, it's too late to mail in your ballot. Anyway, all right, let's jump into the vinyl. That's why you're all here with me today. So I finally found a vinyl copy of this album. I have given up trying to find an OG copy because I've just never seen one, first of all, and Copies online go for a pretty penny and I'm just not willing to spend that. So, and this one had, this reissue has even been hard for me to find. I stumbled upon it downtown. So I picked it up lickety split and it's television's marquee moon. I'm very familiar with this album. <laughs> My CD has gotten a lot of play and it's probably a little bit scratched up by this point, but had to have this. This is probably in my top 20 albums of all time. It is so good. And I love Tom Verlaine's solo career. Richard Lloyd's first album, Alchemy, I have that on vinyl as well. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but um, the dueling guitar work on here, it's something to be heard. It's a masterpiece album. Every single song, you're going to be like, how'd they come up with those licks? Like, this is amazing. And yes, it is. <laughs> it is. So, Television's Marquee Moon. I also have the... Um, let's see if I can pull it out real quick. Yeah, the Rhino reissue of Adventure. I've had that for a while, but necessary albums for sure. So that's the first one. Here's one that kind of is a sentimental record for me. Um, had to pick it up on vinyl when I saw it. This is Tom Petty's Full Moon Fever in all its glory. And this is the first time I've seen it on vinyl as well. Um, this is, uh, I think it's a UK import. My first car had a cassette player. So I had a cassette of Full Moon Fever and I just played it to death, or nearly to death. Yeah, so this album, it just means a lot to me. It almost plays like the greatest hits. It's that good. You've got Free Fallen, Won't Back Down, Love is a Long Road, Running Down a Dream, Feel a Whole Lot Better, Bird's Cover, of course. Uh, mine with a heart of its own, Zombie Zoo, You're So Bad. So you can't go wrong with Tom Petty. His first debut solo album without the Heartbreakers, even though the Heartbreakers do make some cameos on here. Um, you just gotta love the storytelling from Tom Petty. Gotta love his minimalist approach to rock, uh, roots rock. Yeah, this is a must have. Okay, Male Gaze is next, and I found this band. Found out about this band when I was up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. My friend and I took kind of just a day trip up there. It's a really fun place to visit. Um, they have like more record stores up there than Omaha does, and better ones, I might add, or at least in my opinion. Total Drag is up there, which is my favorite record store in the Midwest area. But yeah, I saw this record and I sampled it in the store, ended up really digging it. This is a band from San Francisco. They're called Male Gaze. And yeah, this is actually their third record. It's called Mistaken. I just 
that cover's really cool, right? So on the sticker here, it says garage rock slash shoegaze. Um, I'd even say they're post-punk too, definitely some post-punk influences. Ended up picking their first record as well, which is on sale for seven bucks at my local record store. Any rock influence you can think of, you can probably hear it in their music, but really solid band, Male Gaze. <laughs> Super excited when I saw this down in Lincoln at a store there. And this is a Birds tribute album. It's called Time Between, a tribute to the Boyds. And it was put out in the 80s. I don't know exactly what year, but let me see if you can see the track listing here. And this is just an extraordinary tribute album. I fell in love with this. And I'm going to show you a release that I bought after hearing one of the bands on here, but the covers I really love on here are by Giant Sand, Static. Um, I did not really care for the cover by Dinosaur Jr. and they covered I'll Feel a Whole Lot Better. I just thought that cover kind of sounded out of place with the rest of them and no disrespect to Dinosaur Jr. I do love them. I love them a lot, but I did not appreciate their cover on here. Um, Miracle Legion does a cover of Mr. Spaceman. My favorite cover out of all on here is the Chills cover of Draft Morning. So, I don't know. Check this out if you ever run into it. If you dig 80s Jangle Pop, um, 80s Neo Psychedelia type bands, then you're going to dig this. Icicle Works are on here. Barracudas. Nigel and the Crosses, which is actually Robin Hitchcock and I think Peter Buck too. It's kind of like a fun band they put together. So check this one out if you ever run into it. And because of this, I had to buy the Mock Turtles. So I'm now a big fan of the Mock Turtles. And this is Turtle Soup, the expanded edition. It's a two CD set. Ended up getting this off of Get Import CDs online. Very extensive set. And I love the covers on here. They're very skilled at doing covers. So you have covers of Pale Blue Eyes, Are You Experienced from Hendrix, um, and of course, Time Between and Why from The Birds. Some catchy tunes on here. Catchy tunes, they're kind of indie pop, indie rock from the late 80s, early 90s. I think they had a hit with Can You Dig It? And then Mary's Garden, that is snappy and catchy as all get out, seriously. So Mock Turtles, Turtle Soup, awesome. I'm so glad I discovered them. Okay, this next band, I've just been really late on listening and discovering this band for some reason. Like, I've always heard of them, but I haven't taken the plunge because maybe I've been a little bit overwhelmed by how many albums I have put out. But this is The Fall. This is their A-Sides. Um, it just says 17 classic singles from 1984 to 1989. So the golden era of fall releases. That's what it says anyways. Now, I was reading some reviews on this and some people were like, oh, you got to stick with their pre-1985 era. And then other people were like, no, it's their post-2002 material that's the best. So what do you guys think? What is their best era? I happen to really enjoy this. Um, let's see if you can see the tracks on there. It's a nice collection of tunes from them. So yeah, apparently you either love or hate this period of the fall. Um, gotta love their cover of The King's Victoria on here. I really liked Hit the North Part 1. Cruiser's Creek, I probably put that on repeat a few times. So, the fall. This is awesome. Let me know where I should venture next with the fall. This is a reissue of Ruka Salt's fourth album, which is titled for... I wouldn't say this is one of their essential albums for me, but it's nice that it was reissued and it is on just white vinyl. So not Essential Veruca Salt. Uh, essential Veruca Salt to me is the three albums with the original members. 
When Veruca Salt broke up, they did two albums with just Louise and new members of the band, Louise Post. And I love Louise Post. I had to get this because I'm a fan, of course. Um, so Weird is on here, Centipede, Sick as Your Secrets, Salt Flat Epic. And um, it's worth hearing. It's just, I, I gotta have Nina and Louise together. I need their harmonies. To me, there's just something missing if you don't have Nina and Louise together. So um, I enjoy this album, I do. It's just, I prefer the original members of Ruka Salt. So this next band, this is kind of a blind buy for me. Um, I just went all in. I'm like, I sampled some of their stuff in the store. I'm like, gotta have it. This is the Walking Seeds, or just Walking Seeds as I drop it. So I bought two of their albums. This is Upwind of Disaster, Downward of Atonement. Very sight cover, which kind of exemplifies their sound actually. And then this one, Bad Orb, Whirling Ball. I think this is the one I enjoyed the most, their sound on this one. UK band formed in 1986, heavy psych, kind of grungy, kind of garage rock, lots of fuzz, lots of guitar solos all over the place. I kind of get a Neil Young vibe from the guitar solos. The Walking Seeds, definitely check them out if you like that neo-psych revival period of the 80s with maybe a more grungy, dirtier sound. Walking Seeds. This one I actually found two weekends ago, and I've never seen an early-ish copy of it. This is actually, I think, a second press uh, reissue of it, but I found Ogden's from Small Faces right here. I'll go ahead and take this out, clean this and everything. It's actually a really decent, clean copy, and I got it for a steal. on immediate records and I think it's like I said I think when I looked it up it might be like the 1972 or 1973 pressing of it amazing album to have it's a classic mod psych album from let's see 1968 I think it was recorded in both 1967 and 1968 so the thing about this album this I first listened to it probably back in the mid 2000s when I was really getting more into the kinks and the small faces at that time. I had already exhausted my listening of The Who and I was like, I need to, I need to listen to some other British mod bands now. <laughs> so I dove into the small faces catalog and this was one I had on rotation for quite a bit. It took me more than a couple of listens to get into because side two, I wasn't really digging the narration and that's either going to annoy you or make you want to listen more intently to the storyline of it. But yeah, this is a, this is an interesting album. It's an important album of the era. Side one, you get more straightforward rockin' tunes, and then side two is where you get kind of the whimsical story with the narration, um, which you're, like I said, you're either gonna love that or hate it. And I just love the songs Lazy Sunday, Song of a Baker rocks, love that one. Afterglow, it's the small faces, come on. Definitely sample this album if you haven't explored it before. So I think I paid about 15 bucks for that reissue. Not bad at all. All right, I'm gonna go over a few more and then I'm gonna show VCLT. Yes, I'm gonna be showing VCLT. <laughs> so, um, okay, let's let's start with, I'm briefly gonna show this. Chameleon's Script of the Bridge, which I've talked about in the past few months because I had an expanded CD copy. I found a vinyl copy of it and I found a used vinyl copy of it. It's a 2014 UK reissue. It's a double LP. Not going to spend too much time on it. This is just a brilliant post-punk album. 
um, released in, gosh, I don't know. I don't know when it's released. It doesn't say early eighties, but necessary. The chameleons, chameleons UK love this band. So that was really exciting to find. Um, a couple of love albums. You all probably know that I love the band love. So recently I had to pick up this recent mono mix of Love's Forever Changes. Um, I do have an original stereo copy, but it's not in good shape at all. So when I found out Rhino was doing this, I'm like, heck yeah, I gotta pick that up. And I think this was released just in the last month. Sounds excellent, eh? Um, not gonna spend time talking about this. It is one of those essential 60s albums. And then I picked up Love For Sale. Never seen an OG of this, so I decided to go with this reissue as well. Um, so this is Love's fourth album. It's the one with, or where Arthur Lee is basically the only original member remaining. Um, yeah, and this one is on green vinyl, greenish, kind of a teal. This album blows me away, and you think it might not be up to the par of the first three albums, but you may be surprised. I would say this album deserves a fair shot as being up there as one of the best love albums. So I know it's my uncle's favorite love album. <laughs> so I was happy to find this uh, down on Lincoln. It's a fine reissue for sale from love. Get a drink of water real quick. Another album I finally found that I've been looking for probably since I started buying records. Tommy James and the Shondells, Crimson and Clover. This is a 1981 reissue on Roulette, which was fine with me because it is in excellent shape. Do, 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 do. You gotta have this album. This is one of the best 60s pop records that ever was. Um, of course, the title track, you know that song. I Am A Tangerine, that's classic. Sugar On Sunday, Crystal Blue Persuasion. This album is so good. And the funny thing is that I actually found this CD shortly after. And this one is special because it's kind of a two-in-one type of deal. You get Crimson and Clover, that album, as well as Cellophane Symphony. So, very excited to pick that up as well. Okay, last one I want to show today as far as um, my own purchases. I never thought I would bump into this record here in town. Uh, I know on the website they'd sold out of it recently. So when I found it, I was like, really? I didn't even hesitate. This is Toe the Wet Sprockets, Dulcinea. I've been a fan of this album since I was in college. And this is a gatefold. This pressing sounds amazing apparently this is the one that was included in the record store day box set a few years ago um, and it's on this red vinyl it's a double lp and i don't know i'm really happy with this pressing it sounds so good on vinyl if you don't know to the wet sprocket you're gonna recognize the song something's always wrong because that was a huge hit for them Crowing is another song that's a favorite of mine, personally. Windmills, Reincarnation Song, Fly From Heaven. This is a beautiful album right here. Extremely happy to now have that in my vinyl collection. Okay, I'm about to show some BCLT now, which apparently is not the thing for a woman to do. <laughs> but you know what? Men receive VCLT in this community. The men who have bashed women for receiving VCLT have received it themselves. I have never had a problem or I've never had a creepy vibe from anyone sending me VCLT. I've sent it out to women. I've sent it out to men. I've received VCLT from men. I've received VCLT from women. We like to share music with each other. Um, that's that. It's not a proposition to date anyone I love sending it out to and there's nothing wrong with sharing music with people what we are doing in this whole community is forming friendships with each other right whatever whatever uh, yeah 
So my friend Nick Schultz sent me some very generous music packages and I'm going to show you some of the highlights from those packages, some stuff I've really enjoyed. Uh, the first is a band called Scrawl and this is um, an album or an EP called Bloodsucker. This is a three piece all female group. Not sure if you've heard of them, but they actually do a cover on here of Cold Hearted Snake from Paula Abdul, which I probably played that tape to death. But yeah, kind of a grungy alternative all girl band. This is excellent. I really enjoyed this. And then he sent me this Wipers 7 inch Alien Boy, which originally came out in 1980. And this is the first ever reissue on Record Store Day. It has three tunes on it. You can see what the tunes those are on there. Awesome. I'm a semi new fan to the Wipers. I showed them in a Vinyl Finds video uh, months ago, but very kind of you to send me this. Thank you. And then this is a band called Mountain Movers. And this is their album, Pink Skies, which I believe is their latest release. This blew me away. Um, the guitarist in this band, Chrissy, oh, what's her last name? I probably can't pronounce it anyway, but let's see if it says on here. Chrissy Badalin, Badaline. Anyway, here's a picture of them. This is definitely a psychedelic album, some long jams. Now, her guitar skills are phenomenal. Um, the guitar work on this blows me away, and that's what keeps me coming back to this album. Check out Mountain Movers if you haven't heard of them. It even says on here, uh, it's their seventh studio album. Finds them diving further into an interstellar wormhole, guiding the listener through an enchanting labyrinth of squalling feedback and psychedelia, mind flaying guitar interplay. Check out Mountain Movers. And the last thing I want to show that he sent is a band called Vomit Launch, and he sent me two of their records. This is Exiled Sandwich, and then Mr. Spench. I had never heard of them before. I know the the band name is gonna make you think, uh, I don't know about that. So they're from the late 80s, early 90s. I think they've got three or four full length albums, but what really drew me to them is the singer and her name is Patricia Rowland. I love her voice. You gotta hear this band, they're alternative. I detected some jangle pop on here. Uh, from the guitarist Lindsay Thrasher. Yeah, she's an awesome guitarist. I learned that she actually is part owner of Exiled Records up in Portland, which I actually got to visit earlier this year. That's a killer store up in P Portland if you ever are able to visit, but really love this band. Um, where are some of my favorite songs on here? Uh, Exit Lines. Exit Lines was awesome. Love the musicianship on here. Love Patricia's voice. Yeah, definitely a winner for me. Thank you so much, Nick, for those packages. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I wrap this up, uh, Nick also sent me some Jesse Sykes and the Sweet Hereafter albums. He sent me four of their CDs. Reckless Burning, like Love Lust in the Open Halls of the Soul. I think this one was actually my favorite one. Okay, we have some company up there, so if you hear some voices, that's what's going on. Um, this album, Marble Sun, that's another one. And then, Oh My Girl. They have kind of like an alt country sound, kind of folky, love Jesse's voice. Really been enjoying all of that stuff. Thank you, Nick. Also got a really nice package from my friend Jess M. If you are on Instagram, go ahead and follow him at Love's Fit Love. Excellent taste in music. Um, yeah, I've talked about Jess before. He's one of my good friends. So Explorers Club. He sent me this. This is their first album called Freedom Wind. This is like 
Beach Boys clone band. You'll find the harmonies like the Beach Boys on here, kind of the Brian Wilson eccentricity. Um, amazing album right here. Some shoegaze. He sent me Pale Saints, Mrs. Dolphin, which actually just came out on Record Store Day and I missed it. So kind of a collection of their singles and early stuff. Love the Pale Saints. So that that's amazing. Some more shoegaze. I just listened to this the other night. Pia Frouse. This is their album called Field Ceremony. It came out in 2017. Really enjoyed that. And I haven't even broken the seal on this. This is their latest album, which I might, if I really like it, I'm going to feature it on my favorites of 2020 video. But this is their album called Empty Parks. And then I don't have the other She Sir album, but I think it's over there. He sent me two She Sir albums. Uh, this is Ways a Season. I have not explored them yet. So if you guys like them, let me know. He sent me a bunch of CDs and I, I haven't even broken the seal on these. So I'm just gonna show them real quick. Shoegaze, 93 million miles from the sun towards the light. Lorna, London's Leaving Me. Mean Red Spiders, Still Life, Fast Moving. The meeting places, find yourself along the way. It says you can compare them to slow dive and early ride. So I know they're gonna be up my alley. C90, so Jess has generously sent me the other C86 compilations, 86, 87, 88, 89, and now there's one for 1990. And it, of course, is a Cherry Red Records release. They do so well on these compilations. It's just unreal. So that's a three CD set right there. And then, the Lucy Show, Undone, which I had their second album on vinyl. I think it's called Mania. If that's not right, I'll put it in the ticker box below. It's their first album, and it's Undone from the Lucy Show. Very jangly. Um, I even would compare it to some Cure. Um, definitely has some Cure influences on there, so love this album. I'm going to include a sound clip right now. Okay, that's it. I had quite a bit to show. I tried to move along as quickly as I could, but I do kind of ramble sometimes. Thank you to Jess and Nick for sending me those lovely music packages. And I'll be back soon, hopefully with my shoegaze part two video, you guys. Be safe, be well, keep spinning the music, and talk to you soon. Bye!